Hey there folks and welcome back to the Gamer's Grotto. Today we're going to be playing some more of L.A. Noir. This is the PlayStation 4 version, the PS4 remaster, uh, a, uh, 4K remaster of the original PS3 game made by Team Bondi, Bondi sorry, out of Sydney, Australia. So we're going to be going back into this uh, from where we left off uh, uh, from yeah, yesterday's playthrough. Uh, we're going to be continuing on. Our next case is a marriage made in heaven. So we're going to be starting off on that case now. Now just a bit of a heads up, Ellie Noir was a very technologically advanced game when it released back in 2011. It uh, had a lot of... Sorry, one sec, just adjusting my mic. It had a lot of... Um... Well, first of all, it was one of the first games to use uh, full facial capture as opposed to just voice work. This allowed for the actors to convey actual human emotions so that the player could tell when a suspect or witness was lying or telling the truth. And back then, you couldn't really get away with doing that with just standard CGI. So Brandon McNamara, who was the creator of uh, Ellie Noir, decided that, you know what, we would scan the actors' faces into the game and have them convey those emotions of, you know, if a person's lying or not and whatnot, uh, convey them through the, the facial animations, uh, well, the, face, the facial uh, footage uh, that was used on the characters for their faces. So it's a very unique game, and uh, it didn't do very well in sales back in the day, uh, but uh, it has since developed a cult following and is uh, considered to be one of the best cop-style games. Um, so it takes place in the 1940s. A lot of the cases are based on real cases. So uh, they actually uh, got uh, old cases from the LAPD, and uh, they change characters' names and stuff like that. But the cases are all real. Uh, so that's another thing that was really cool about Ellie Noir was the fact that the cases were actually real and uh, uh, were actual cases from the 1930s, 40s. Anyway, let's get right into it right now with A Marriage Made in Heaven, the next case of Ellie Noir. All right, gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit and run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site, the coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. I'm telling you, it'll never stick, and you'll get roasted. Drink. I got the goddamn jitters again. I didn't come to California to be a secretary. Yeah, I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. I want to stop him with one round. Wow, that looks like a few. Looks like the DA is going to press charges. Anna Rodriguez might do time. I'll speak to the DA. She suffered enough. Mm, I don't know, Cole. She's an easy make, and the DA likes convictions. I'll convince him to let it go. <laughs> How you do that? I'll give him something better.
Detectives, over here. Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Dick is a white male, name of Lester Patterson. Walked out of the bar and into the street. Car hit over there, and he ended up here. Dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar, name of Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now, we're going to take a look around. Phelps, you should take a look at the body. The poor guy didn't stand a chance. I ended on his face and ended up here. Car must have struck him from behind. Dear Mr. Patterson, it is with great pleasure that we acknowledge the receipt of your application 14-F, and pre-approval has been granted to raise the weekly premium on your life insurance policy from $3.70 per week to $5.90 per week. This raise became effective on January 1st, 1947. Where our standard veteran care policy entitled you to a lump sum payout of $10,000 in the event of your untimely death or permanent incapacitation. This new plan secures your beneficiaries a sum of $16,000. We at California Fire and Life thank you and wish you good health and security for the future. Yours sincerely, Curtis Benson. Patterson has life insurance. Apparently, $16,000, it wasn't enough. We can notify next of kin. What have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Body traveled a good 20 feet. This blood is a long way from the body. The car must have been going like a bat out of hell. So the driver managed to break before the impact. I'll have some prints ready for your report if you let me get on with this. A knife covered in blood. Could be a steak knife. This is a hit and run case, Phelps. Anyone could have thrown away a kitchen knife. In any case, we'll want tech services to scrub the alleyway before they bag the knife. She's all yours, Detective. Miss Perry? Yes? I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. 
Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Then what happened? I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. Three, C, eight. Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well... There were two voices, a man and a woman. That's all. Why are you holding out on us, Miss Perry? I'm sorry. I was hoping to tell my story to the newspapers. I'd like to get my picture in the paper. I'm trying to find work as an actress, and things look pretty difficult. Cough it up, sister. We don't have all night. People arguing? They were husband and wife. I could tell by what she was yelling. Intimate things. Very embarrassing for the man. Thank you, Miss Perry. Your information has been very helpful. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. You certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. Let's see what the patrons have to say. I'll take the bartender. You work the rest of the room. Have a seat. Thanks, Doctor. How are you finding working at the clinic? It's, uh, fine. Are you sure? Can I be honest with you, Doctor? I would hope so, Courtney. I was hoping that the therapy would be more beneficial. Treatment can, unfortunately, be very long-term. So many of the patients here are addicts, Doctor. Many of them have been for years, Courtney. In the past, these people were condemned to sanatoriums. If we can reveal the root of the problem, then we have a chance to help them. And until then, they stay sedated? Do I detect a hint of reproach, Courtney? I was expecting more, Doctor. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. Part of being a physician, Courtney, is learning to be patient. How is it possible to keep so many of them on their medications, Doctor? Many of their addictions are illegal. Oh, many things in life are gray, Courtney. What may on the surface appear to be illegal is actually a benefit to society at large. I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna, Mrs. Patterson, home. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. So what was he doing outside? It's against licensing regulations to drink on the sidewalk. Mr. and Lorna were having a fight. The owner made him take it outside. It was pretty ugly. Do you know the victim? Yeah, Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No. He came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. A witness overheard an argument. Lester and Lorna. 
There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? Why was Lorna Patterson in such a hurry to leave? What is going on here? Lorna was pretty upset, so Leroy took her home. Lorna and Leroy are close. They've been talking about opening a new bar. Leroy? Leroy Sabo, the owner. How long have Lorna and Leroy been talking about this new bar? Uh, who knows? I just served the drinks. Bartenders hear all sorts of things. Are you going to tell me, or do we have to start playing rough? When Lester was drinking, he treated Lorna like dirt. He gambled away all their money. Lorna pitched Leroy about the bar. I don't know how interested he is. Is Leroy doing well? <laughs> Hell no. The only thing keeping this place afloat are the poker games. Thanks for your help, Lynch. I'm going to need you to sign a statement with the patrolman. Sure, no problem. You get anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. And Lester was a fan of the love tap. So this is why everybody comes to Ray's. Sorry, Phelps, do you mind if I get on with this? How bad is it? Come on, you can tell me. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? I need to run a partial license plate, 3 Charles 8. Cross-check possible Lincoln owners. Suspect vehicle is a red Lincoln Continental. Just a moment, detective. Only one possible make on that license. Registered to a William Shelton, 738 West Temple Street. Thank you. Looks like we caught a break on this one. Officer, please tell me what's going on. Lucky break getting a partial ID. These cases are usually dead in the water after 24 hours if no one comes forward. Why don't they just stop? You heard about fight or flight during the war? Sure. Never back your enemy into a corner. That kind of stuff? Right. Well, in a hit and run, the perp is already in flight. It's easier to keep going. It takes a degree of moral courage to stop and accept responsibility. You're not as dumb as you make yourself out to be, are you, Stefan? I didn't know I was making myself out to be dumb. right there. William Shelton? Yes. It doesn't look good, Shelton. You packing your bags and making a run for it? You know why we're here. Yes. The accident 
We've got witnesses who can put this car at the scene, not to mention the physical damage. This is open and shut, Sheldon. That coward thinks he can run from everything. Land to his wheel arches. Come on. Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. No wonder he killed someone driving like this. Don't let that asshole get away. That's it. Cuff them and we're done. Put your hands in the air! How does a vehicular manslaughter rap sound, Shelton? I hit him. I admit it. I just panicked, but it wasn't my fault. What do you mean? The guy jumped right out in front of me. He came out of nowhere. There's nothing I could do about it. Why didn't you stop? I've had accidents before. That's it. We're done here. The DA is gonna love you. They weren't all my fault. I'm a surveyor. I need my license for my job. There were people around. A woman and a man were standing right next to him. I thought they could get him to a hospital. I'm telling you, it's not my fault. The guy is dead, Shelton. You can't be serious. William Shelton, you're coming downtown. We need to talk about a manslaughter charge. Leave the coroner and the paperwork. Procedure can wait. We should probably go speak to the wife and let her know what's happening. OK. You become all part of the prospect of paperwork, don't you? I always loved how Lorna Pattinson, I believe that's her name, Pattinson or Patterson, I, she, she literally doesn't care about her husband whatsoever. She doesn't really care that he's dead. She's just like, yeah, whatever. Shit happens. <laughs> Yes? Hello? Mrs. Patterson. Is this about my husband? We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? Can you tell me what happened? What's to tell? He got hit by a car and now he's dead. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? 
I think it's about time you left. I have someone here. I beg I... your pardon? You're going to have to run that one by us again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends. Good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. How did the car come to hit Lester? He walks straight into the path of an oncoming car. You expect me to believe that, Lorna? It's all very convenient. Gambling for Lester was like the needle for a hophead. He was yelling at me. He was yelling at the whole world. I kind of felt sorry for the driver. Poor guy had no chance. You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk? We were always arguing. So what? I can't remember if this is bad cop or a Q, so I'm going to ask other players. Okay, it is bad cop. That's what I thought. I wasn't too sure. Admit it. You were baiting him, pushing his buttons. We can easily get the full story from the regulars in the bar. All right. Lester was playing cards out back. He lost, of course, and wanted back in. He suggested I earn the money on my back to get a mistake. That was the proposition he was putting to his so-called buddies. So maybe I was a little angrier than usual. Let's just say I took exception to his idea. The bartender said that you and Leroy were planning to go into business together. Can you explain how you'll get the money to do that? I have a little money saved away. You're being economical with the truth, Lorna. You want to back that up, little man? You increase the premium on Lester's life insurance. GI insurance policies have a $10,000 payout. It was Leroy's idea. Lester lived on the edge. He was always getting into fights, crack games, pinochle, you name it. Turns out it was good advice. It speaks to motive and premeditation, Lorna. You're forgetting the hit and run detective. You and Mr. Sabo have an interesting day. I'm sure we will, officer. Now, if you could both just leave. We're leaving, ma'am. Sorry for your loss. I can see what a tough time you're having with all this. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? Messages for me, please. Just one, Detective, from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Thanks for your help.
We can put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. You'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again? The victim was dead before the car hit him. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart. You're kidding me. Been doing this job 23 years, son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. He was stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. We found a knife in the alleyway. Where is it now? Was it bagged? By Patrolman Kaplan. Perfect. I'll get you a definite match. Jesus, we got him. Murder one. We were right there, and they tried to stare us down. Now they'll both get the gas chamber. We have the knife, we have the coroner's report, and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in. Spoken to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. He confirmed your husband's cause of death. We'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. Leroy stabbed him. I had nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. You're very good, Lorna. Put the gun down, Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand jury. Nice of you to give me up, sweetheart. Oh, they're whispering in my ear, telling me how we had to get rid of them, how good it could be, all the money we could claim, all that planning, how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, all shut the up! You had bases covered, baby. I have nothing to do you with it. You think I'm going to fry for you, He's Lorna? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him, for God's sake! It's too late, Sabo. Next time, you're mine. Sabo, stop or I will shoot! You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. It never gets any easier, Bukowski. So, I give you a hit and run, 
You're bringing back fraud, conspiracy, and first-degree murder. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. I never understood that case notes with a five-star rating. Another visit to Ray's and you would have seen what Leroy was prepared to do to avoid jail. I, I don't understand what that means. Ray. Ray's could either mean the bar or Ray Pinker, which is the coroner. I never understood those case notes for a five-star rating. It made no sense. Because normally, case notes, if you have a four, three, two, or one-star rating, the case notes gives you, gives you a hint. But for a five-star rating, which is the, the, the highest rating you can get in the game, if, if that's a hint, that doesn't make any sense to me. Because if you go back to raise the bar, there's nothing there. If you go back to the coroner... There's not going to be anything there either. That never made any sense to me. Anyway, let's go on to the next case. Phelps, Bukowski. B-Cop says he located a green Kaiser Fraser from the hot sheet. Address is 6 West 2nd Street. Get over there, see what you can find out. Go on. Sorry to inconvenience you. We're on it, Captain. You think those vice boys get any on the side? I swear the more bent cars we bring in, the longer the hot sheet gets. It pays the rent, though. It keeps Mrs. Phelps in the manner to which she's accustomed. I'm not sure she'd agree with you. Passionate, romantic type like you, Cole? <laughs> I don't believe a word of it. I just wish he'd hurry up and propose already. Talking. Someday you'll say something intelligent. I always love how Stefan just takes his freaking time. I'm out in the car and I gotta wait for him for a few minutes because I don't know. He likes to he likes to just walk. <laughs> it's not like we're in a You're hurry to, her the to go now. anywhere or anything. Wonder what Veronica Lake makes of that one. What a case. You hear whether they're making any progress? So Captain Donnelly seems to think they have it all wrapped up. Brown and Green are sweating this manly character. I heard it'll be in front of a grand jury by next week. Poor thing. Terrible enough being murdered like that without having their death screwed all over the front Can we try to get there in one piece? No! Where's the fun in that? It's more fun to get there in pieces. 
Lots of pieces. That's the car, Cole. Just pulling out of the drive. Get him! Remember, we need him healthy enough to answer questions. 1247, Detective Phelps requesting immediate backup in pursuit of a stolen green Kaiser Fraser from 6 West 2nd Street. Lay into his wheel arches. Come on! Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. All right, all right. Maybe I was a couple miles over the speed limit. Get bracelets. Out of the car now! Why did you run from us? I saw a big car in my rearview mirror with two tough guys bearing down on me. What would you do? What's your name? Cliff Harrison. You're under arrest. For what? What are you talking about? Nice try. I'm talking about the car being stolen. You're out of your mind. I bought the car, and I've got the paperwork to prove it. Looks like we'll have some questions for the people at Coombs Automotive. You purchased this car from Coombs Automotive Company? Yeah, that's right. And the ownership papers? From the same place. If this is a forgery, it's top notch. This will need to be traced. You have a criminal record, Mr. Harrison? No, nothing like that. You better give us something, Cliff, or we're gonna make this hard on you. I didn't steal the car. I ran because, because I've got some wacky backy in the glove compartment. How much, Cliff? One reefer. We'll let it slide. You're in enough trouble. <laughs> Who did you deal with at Coombs Automotive? The owner, Richard Coombs. And he made out the bill of sale personally? Of course he did. He kept a facsimile for his records. Check with him. We're going to get to the bottom of this, Harrison. Until we do, you're going downtown. You've got to be kidding me. I'm getting arrested for buying a goddamn car? If everything is legit, Harrison, you'll be out soon. Until then, if I were you, I'd keep my mouth shut. Bag his possessions as evidence and have him arraigned for Grand Theft Auto. Right, detective. Do you know who my father is? We need to get to Coombs Auto and check out Harrison's story. I always love when people use that line against cops. Do you know who my father is? Nobody cares. Some of the most convincing Especially people in the you 40s. will ever listen to are In the 1940s, liars. the cops wouldn't Usually give two shits politicians. who your father is. They really wouldn't. Because back in the 40s, a lot of cops were kind of crooked themselves. Paperwork all looked above board, and he seemed like a clean-cut kid. Uh-huh. Well, I get it now. You see some kid who's basically you five years ago and assume he's got to be innocent. I'm more than happy to be proved wrong. Hey, if he'd been black or Hispanic, you'd be singing a different tune. You spout all this communist crap about treating everybody the same, but it only works one way. I'm not sure that's communism, Stefan. Oh, God, please. Not another history lesson from the man who single-handedly won the war. Are you finished? Yes. I feel much better now. We'll shake down the car dealer and take it from there. Unless his daddy plays golf with yours, of course. In which case, we'll give him a firm gentleman's handshake and be on our way. See? I knew you weren't finished.
Not another step. I have got a Buick Century sedan that would be absolutely perfect for you. Detective Phelps, LAPD, are you the owner? That's right. Richard Coombs, at your service. You looking to trade in a black and white, boys? <laughs> Mr. Coombs, we're investigating an auto theft. A man by the name of Cliff Harrison claims he bought the car here. Well, uh, some people would say that my cars are a steal. That's a joke, son. Very amusing, Mr. Coon. I remember Harrison. It was a green two-tone Kaiser Fraser, if I remember rightly. Do you have the bill of sale? It's in my office. Walk this way. That's a joke, too, son. Phelps, you mind if I shoot this guy? He's getting on my nerves. So, so the actor who plays Richard Coombs is, is in so many movies. I can't remember the... I, I keep on thinking his name's Kurt something. Um, he was in the Wayne's World movies. He was also in the Ghostbusters movies. Uh, he's been in a lot of stuff. He's, 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 he's a Hollywood actor and a comedian. I, I just can't remember his name. Kurt Fuller? I keep thinking Kurt Fuller, but I don't think that's him. Anyway... There it is. Got the original pink slip there, too. Gene Archer, 146 North Fremont Avenue. Harrison's purchase receipt was legit, at least. We have a couple of questions. All right, fellas. Shoot. Can you tell us how you came to buy the car? Girl just wandered in right off the street. Nothing unusual about the car. Not really my usual type of vehicle. The price was certainly right, though. Nice girl, but about as sharp as a bag of wet mice. Did you pay with check or cash? A check. She wanted it made out to cash, but I insisted. Man has to watch his cash flow. What name? I made it out to Gene Archer on the Bank of Arcadia. Can you describe this Gene Archer? Brunette, maybe 25, 26. A little on the plump side, but not bone ugly. What was your impression of her? Kind of harried and harassed, in a hurry to go somewhere, but no place to go. You get to know the type. Do you know anything about the company that prints these pink slips? Nope. Should I? It isn't exactly my business. These pink slips are leading us to something big, Coombs. It's time to stop being cute. I'm going to assume you're having a bad day, son. I sell cars, not paper. When exactly did you hand over the check, Mr. Coombs? Close of play on Friday. Why didn't you pay her cash? You knew the car was dirty. I had an inkling. When people are in a hurry for money, always pay by check, son. Gives you a couple days to back out. This was all above board. Yes, of course it was. Did this look legitimate to you, Coombs? I'm in used cars, son, not bearer bonds. In my business, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Now don't come on all high and mighty with me if you want my help. Thanks for your help, Mr. Coombs. We need to continue the investigation. Hope you sort out your problem with Mr. Harrison. Go easy on him, son. Boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. He's built too low. The fastballs fly over his head.
Let me shoot this guy, please. You have a pleasant day, Mr. Coombs. Well, Harrison might be off the hook, but we can still run an APB on Gene Archer. Get on the horn and call it in. Phelps badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? Requesting an APB on Gene Archer, age approximately 25, on suspicion of Grand Theft Auto. I'll relay the information. I need an address on a marquee printing company. Marquee Printing Company, sure. Just a moment. Aliso Street, near San Pedro. Messages, please. A James Velasco is being held at Central Station on suspicion of GTA. Possible link to the Harrison case. They're waiting on you to conduct the interview. Thanks. Look about him. Here's a chicken and egg question for you. Do you think you have to be an asshole to sell cars? Or that selling cars turns you into an asshole? You've got it in for everyone today, haven't you? I've always got it in for car sales. It doesn't matter what they is. And why do they always think they're comedians when they're about as funny as a heart attack? Maybe the more annoying they are, the quicker you sign on the dotted line. Just to get the hell out of there. Do you have any videos that are not like 69,000 hours long? Uh, uh, none of my Should Let's Play videos are 69,000 hours long, but thank you. <laughs> We should go to the station. Uh, see what this Belasco guy has to say. The longest uh, YouTube streams I do are two hours, and that's that's the length of my streams. Actually funny. I mean, there's been a few times where I've exceeded two hours, but I try not to because I know it gets boring for the viewer after two hours. Um, I don't even like watching, uh, streams that are over two hours, so I couldn't picture other people liking it. Uh, so I, I tend to, uh, I can t tend to, uh, keep an eye on the time when I'm doing my live streams.
And what can I do for you, gentlemen? I'm a traffic detective from Central Division. Who's in charge here? I am, Gordon Lightfall. What's this about? We understand that your company prints California vehicle titles. Yes, I have the government contract to print pink slips. I've done for some years. Have you had any goods or equipment stolen recently? We're running up against stolen cars with seemingly legitimate paperwork. Not recently. Uh, have you ruled out forgery? There's no shortage of talented artists in this town. We'll keep it in mind. Well, I trust you've got all that you need. Detectives, Belasco is prepped and ready in two. Another stolen car with legit papers. Thanks. Crump. James Belasco? I want a lawyer. It's my car and I got the proof right here. Take a look for yourself. The paper is real enough, Belasco, but the car isn't yours. This pink slip is a forgery. Where were you taking the car, James? Blow it off, Greenhorn. You'll get nothing from me. You're a two-time loser. If you don't give me something, I'm going to ask the DA for the maximum. You're looking at 10 years, Belasco. Kiss your youth goodbye. I want a deal. Keep talking and we'll see what sort of deal you're worth. My job is to drive the cars out of state. Nevada, Arizona, sometimes New Mexico. With the paperwork they provide, it's normally a breeze. Does the name Jean Archer mean anything to you? Nope. Never heard of her. You're a liar, James. Say that again. I'm telling the truth. I don't know the broad. So that's why you both have the same address printed on your pink slips. She's a mule for these stolen vehicles, genius. Same as you. Jesus. All right, I know her. Stupidest broad I ever met. Always cooking up crazy schemes. I don't know why those guys use her. You happy now? What happens to the cars once they cross over the state lines? I don't know. I just deliver them. Give me something, Belasco, or I'll take you back to the cells and tell the whole station you're a child molester. How long do you think you'll last? Okay, okay, I hear you. The cars get sold in Chicago or back east. Sometimes I bring back cars coming the other way. Where do you pick up the cars, Belasco? Warehouses. Mainly in the East downtown. An address, Velasco. You want my help with the DA? Cough it up, now. A place on Industrial Street. I don't know the number. You're gonna help me out, right? Keep talking, kid, and we'll see what we can do. Bad call.
We're going to check if this information is worth anything. And if it is, I need your help here, pal. If it is, then we'll know you're a man of your word. And so will the DA. Oh, I, I know. I've, I've beaten this game tons of times. Uh, I just, uh, Phelps, right? I just, this is my first time yes, streaming it for my Look, channel, that's can all. Can do this later? I'm in the middle of it. Ray Pinker. I'm with Technical Services. The pink slips are all real. Yes, we know that. There's only one company that prints them in California, the Marquee Printing Company. They've confirmed that the numbers are legitimate. You've checked them out? Sure. They're on Aliso Street, near the corner of San Pedro. The guy I spoke to was Lightball. Gordon Lightball. Here, I wrote it down. Thanks, Ray. This is a great lead. We'll get down there as soon as we can. Well, that doesn't even make any sense, considering I was just at Marquee Printing anyway. Oh, so why would I... GTA suspect Gene Archer? Spotted by a patrolman. Western Union office, 253 South Hill. Less than a minute away down the street if you run. Go! You would figure that he would say, hey, I've already been there. He wouldn't just take the... No. You wouldn't just take the, the address and be like, oh, wow. Marquee Printing Company? I've never been there before. <laughs> Isn't that the cop? Five star goddamn wedding. True. The dialogue of the NPCs is so stupid too. They're just like, <laughs> they just say the dumbest things. <laughs> it's like random ass stupid conversation. So, LAPD. You gonna see we'll take a it from here. Man again? God damn it! Everyone's against me. Look, just let me get my money and get out of here, okay? You look sweet. How about giving a girl a break? I could be very nice. I'm afraid I can't do that, Miss Archer. Stefan, call for black and white. Oi, just Miss Archer, like you look like a little leprechaun. The LAPD. <laughs> she. She literally looks like she she's looking for a pot of gold beneath the rainbow. What in the hell is she wearing? <laughs> the car you sold to Coombs was stolen, Miss Archer. There won't be any money. I handed over all the right paperwork when I sold it, Buster. You're lying, Jean. You want to prove that, Buster? Try and prove that pink slip is not real. Look, this is all just a Fuck! Mistake. I knew I, I knew that was wrong. It was supposed to be uh, Belasco's pink slip. Son of a bitch. Ah, oh, all right. What a point. How long have you and Belasco <laughs> been delivering cars? Who is James Belasco? She just she just okay, she she just incriminated herself by saying James cuz I never said James. He's your boyfriend. Ah, oh, fuck. He's the guy that you boost up cars with. Damn it. He gave you up. He thinks you're so dumb you'd steal a free sample. So I'm no genius. I make the best with what I've got. Why are you so cruel? You decided to make this hard on yourself, Gene. Let's see how you handle the hard time. I kind of find it odd that no matter, even if you get your choices wrong, she still goes to jail no matter what. I, I always found that funny in L.A. Noir that even if you made the wrong decisions, all it did was affect your rating. But at the end of the day, the same outcome happens. It's just very odd because in real police work, that would never happen. If you're interrogating someone and then you don't get the evidence you have, you can't just throw them back into the j You can't just throw them into jail. It's, it doesn't work like that. girl used to getting her own way little did she know her feminine charge it's a game they were too bored to fix those details 
She's not my type. And what is your type, Phelps? Yeah, American. I think at the end of the day, because they spent so much money side, on uh, the Wait, facial uh, capture technology, because uh, I, I remember it being like blondes, a few, I guess. A few billion dollars the just to make the game. Now we're getting some. Um, yep. I'm and they never, ba they never made back and there's nothing the cost. Wrong with a good redhead. Like, <laughs> back when the game right. first came yeah. out, I in 2011, soon in the interest of they didn't make back what they spent on it at all. Standards. The standards like, are only as high it, as the last glass of The meat. sales never matched with uh, the cost of the production of the game. Which explains why Team Bondi uh, uh, filed bankruptcy. Well, Whoops. now you've either got to stop or put your fucking foot down. Okay, okay, he's had enough. We have some questions for you, Mr. Lightball. Mr. Lightball, we're currently working two auto theft cases. Do you know anything about a car theft ring? Uh, certainly not. Why would I get mixed up in a thing like that? We have suspects with legitimate pink slips that were printed here, Lightball. You better give me something before I bring the whole department down here. Don't be hysterical, detective. As a matter of fact, we had a similar problem a couple of years ago. A number of used car lots were selling blank documents to a criminal organization. Do the names Cliff Harrison and James Belasco mean anything to you? No, they do not. Harrison bought his car. We will from continue Coons. watching Makes the video another time. That thanks, though. Here. Do you have any employees? No problem, trouble? man. You have a wonderful no, day. Don't. Take care. They've all been carefully screened. Look, now that I think about it, the name Coombs sounds familiar. I think they may have been involved in stolen documents in the past. Do you have a delivery ledger, Mr. Lightval? We would like to cross-check against the Coombs Automotive Emporium. It's a little out of the ordinary, Detective. Uh, I'm not sure I can share those sorts of records. Hand it over, Lightball. You don't want us having bad thoughts about you, do you? Very well. But this really is irregular. Over here. Look for patterns, recurring names, unusual addresses, anything out of the ordinary. You certainly encourage repeat business, Lightball. This Mr. Bigelow is a good customer. Sorry to bother you, sir. We'll let you know if there are any developments. You Marines were gung-ho, Cole. You have a 45. Don't you ever want to use it? I'll take the back. 
Just give me a few seconds to get around there. Yeah, it's very weird that he's a former Marine, former uh, soldier, and he refuses to use a gun. <laughs> it's like, uh, you fought in the war, buddy. Uh, if you didn't use a gun, then I don't know how you survived the war. Cole Phelps, LAPD. All of you are coming downtown with me. Throw out the guns. On the ground now. in the back on the way out. Put your weapons down and your hands in the air. Get in cover! Find some cover! I'm gonna put... Try the door at the end. I heard something. Don't shoot! Keep your hands up. Watch him, Bukowski. He doesn't move until I've tossed this place. Marquis Printing Company. <laughs> There's nothing like going direct to the source. Betting slip. Looks like Mr. Lightfall has been on a losing streak. There are enough slips here to keep them stealing cars till Christmas. We've got a trail of pink slips and stolen cars that leads right to your door, Bigelow. You're in this up to your neck, but I don't think you're the man in charge. Make it easier on yourself. Give him up. I do work on cars for customers. You charge in here shooting up the place like it's the ballot of bulge. I can't give you anything. We know about Marky printing. You can make this easier on yourself by giving us your man on the inside. I sometimes repair cars and put them back on the road. I need a pink slip to resell them. There's no problem there. There are at least four dead men in this warehouse. A couple more. Punks won't make for that much extra paperwork. We'd be doing the legal system a favor. Okay, okay, tough guy. I get the message. Lightfall. The guy who runs Marquis. He's the big shot. He likes to spend big at the track. He owes people. Lightfall. The guy with no luck at the track. Tell me about him. One of the guys lying over there. You're right. He has no luck. So if I go over there and check his jacket, your story's gonna ring true? I'm warning you, Bigelow. Give it a try, Flatfoot. For some reason, none of my guys like to bring ID to work. 
Whether you give up your bosses or not, Bigelow, you're going away for as long as I can put you there. We'll see. I didn't fire a shot, Kappa. I just watched you tear my place up. I think we need a siren. What a mess. Ugh, gonna take some cleaning up, that's for sure. I wish it hadn't gone that way. Well, they shouldn't bring guns to work with them. We didn't have a lot of choice. You have to admire the barefaced cheek of someone who tries to blow your brains out one minute and then pleads innocence the next. Yeah, especially when he's surrounded by evidence. Yo, guys like Bigelow spend so much time convincing themselves that they're not doing anything wrong that they actually start to believe their own bullshit. They get sloppy. Bigelow, Lightball, all of them. If they hadn't, who knows how long they could have kept this racket going. Complacency or greed. It's always one of the two that brings... Do you have any videos that are not like 69,000 hours long? Lol. True. It's a game they were too bored to fix those details. I will continue watching the video another time thanks though. You're under arrest. You again? This harassment is starting to wear thin. We found a box of pink slips in a warehouse full of hot cars. You signed for them, Lightball. I signed for all the orders and deliveries. You'll need something better than that, cowboy. Save it, Lightball. We already have all we need to send you down. I've had enough of this. You either produce some shred of proof, or I call my attorney. You're in the hole with the organization. We know about the debts, Lightball. I agree. I have a small problem. I'm prepared to help you in any way I can, Detective. I'll name names. Uh, I need you to keep this out of the paper. I need... You need to shut up now, Lightball. Gordon Lightball, I'm charging you with conspiracy and fraud. Hands behind your back. The LAPD Central Traffic Division has today smashed a nationwide auto theft ring, writes crime correspondent, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here it is. Traffic squad detectives confronted a large group of armed thugs. After an exchange of gunfire, more than a dozen dead criminals were removed from the scene. The LAPD sustained no casualties. Damn fine work, Phelps. Now get out there and nail some more bad guys, will you? I want to finish reading this. Yeah, I doubt this is going to be a five-star rating. I, I got too many uh, answers wrong. 16 of 20, yeah. Uh, I screwed up on a few of those answers. 
Yeah, Bigelow. I know I screwed up on his answer. I should have. Uh, I should have. I said I went to doubt instead of lie, and uh, I should have done lie and used the evidence of Lightfall against uh, Bigelow. Um, all right, so we're gonna do the final case for the patrol desk, um, just because. Just because then I can. Um, yeah, I still got. We still got time. So let's do the final. Uh, case on patrol desk which is uh, the fallen idol uh because then i can end the stream after that and we can next stream we can start the uh the homicide desk which is honestly one of the best desks uh homicide and uh arson are my two favorite desks to deal with anyway let's uh continue on with the final fallen idol that'll be our final uh final case for today Phelps, Bukowski, you have a new case. Two women, possible drink drive. How was that a case? The broad says she was doped and that somebody tried to kill her. Where did this take place? That's the bit you're gonna love. Right across the street. What? A Chevy Styline took a nosedive off the escarpment, fetched up underneath a Cola King billboard. Up to it, boys. We got bad guys to catch. Straight through the red light. Said she never saw it. See you later, fellas. Try not to work too hard. Now look at you bantering with the boys. Brings a tear to my eye watching my caterpillar grow wings. I'm just trying to fit in. Educated, hardworking, straight as an arrow. I hate to break it to you, Cole, but you'll never fit in at Central. Hey, I gave his wife a tap. I said all's fair and, and That just Cole. brings up what I just said earlier, is that the cops, he's That's saying, the because Cole is by the book, because by, Cole is a by-the-book detective, he would never fit in. And that's true. Back in the 1940s, the cops were so corrupt. Half of them worked for the mob while working for the police. So, um, Cole is kind of like the odd duck in, in, in the detachments. Because he's like, he's a by-the-book cop. And all the other cops, including all of his partners, none of them are by the book. They're all corrupt in their own way. Look out for the pedestrians. Stop just ahead. face looks familiar. Well, that's June Ballard, <laughs> Tarzan's sister, Beast of the Amazon. She's married to Guy McAfee. The captain has moved to Vegas now, but the two of them still have juice. Phelps, traffic. Detective Phelps. Hey, Bukowski. Long time no see. You could have called this in by megaphone, Enrique. <laughs> Phelps, this is Enrique Gonzalez. Enrique was a pretty decent middleweight. What do we have, Gonzalez? Broad drives right through the empty lot and off the side of the escarpment. Her story is that a movie producer doped her and her friend and sent the car over the cliff. Was anyone hurt? Driver's beat up. 
Not too bad, considering. If she hadn't hit that billboard, you'd be scraping both of them off the pavement. Passengers are Jessica Hamilton. She's just a kid. She's pretty knocked around. Kid gonna be all right? I think so. They've taken her to Central Receiving. If you want to take a look around, you can stall the ambulance. Thanks. Do that. One more thing. Watch out for the driver. She cuts rough. Hey! Out of the way, huh? Uh, if you're looking for the coroner, he's down by the crash site. I ain't the guy you want to talk to, detective. You'll want to see this, Phelps. There, laid out on the trunk. And that isn't even the best part. They've been torn off. Where did you find them? They were stuffed in the young lady's handbag. I'll run a trace for semen when I get back to the lab. Dear Jesse, please, please, dear, come home. If you're worried about your father, don't be. All is forgiven. He has a hot temper, and he can be very proud. But you're still his little girl, and he loves you. I know he didn't mean those things he said. You're a good, decent girl, dear, and you're not She's made for Hollywood. Away from home. I was 15 once myself. I wanted to be just like Clara Bow and wear lovely dresses and kiss handsome men. But once I grew up and married your father, I realized I would never have been happy in that life. You'll realize it one day, too. I am sure. Uh. I can barely read that. Uh, um, I'm sure. I'm sure Junie is looking out for you, but I can't help worrying. You know what your old mother is like. The world is a very dangerous place for, your gir for young girls, especially ones with stars in their eyes. Stars are nice to look at, but sometimes they can blind you to what's right in front of your nose. Emma and Molly miss you awfully. Emma's getting so pretty now, and little Molly is bright as a button just like you were at her age. They need their big sister to look out for them. Dear, dear Jesse, please come back. I'm frightened for you. I can't help feeling something terrible is going to happen. I cry for you every night. Your loving mother, Camille Hamilton. Looks like they're lucky they weren't more badly injured. Must have been unconscious. Being relaxed tends to lessen the soft tissue damage. Drunk driver? Maybe not. How so? Well, a head I found without a body piqued my interest. See what you think. <laughs> Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. <clears throat> Is it real? No. I think it's supposed to be a replica of an Indian shrunken head. It's some kind of curio or movie prop. See the casting marks? What's it made from? Plaster of Paris would be my first guess, then painted. So we can rule out the murder angle? No, you can rule that in. That thing was wedging the accelerator to the floor. Whoever did it wanted these women dead. How does someone manage to tip their ride straight off a cliff? If the driver's in a fit state, we should ask. I think the more impressive thing is that the fact that the car went down that and 
is not more badly damaged. That's... That's the impressive thing. Because... That's not even... The, the car wouldn't even slide down that. It would just, like, fly down that. And... It wouldn't hit that. It would have... If anything, it wouldn't have hit that. It would have crashed through that sign, landed on the road below, and they would have been both killed. I don't know. That, that, whole, that whole setup is weird. Um, and... I always felt that this case, out of all the L.A. LA Noir cases, is is kind of stupid. I know it's based on a real case, but it's kind of stupid. Like, because there's no way that car would have survived that, going down that cliff. It's... there. the likelihood is so slim. Mrs. McAfee, we would like to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. I prefer to use my maiden name. June Ballard. You might be familiar with some of my work. Can you tell us what happened here? You're kind of cute for a cop. Maybe a bit on the serious side. What about me, June? I'm a big fan of you? beasts. I don't like. Keep out of this. We understand that you're still suffering from the effects of the accident, Mrs. McAfee. The officer says that you claim that you were drugged. Who did this to you? That rat slipped us a Mickey Finn. It's no wonder I feel so dopey. I can't remember. It's a serious offense to withhold information from the police during a criminal investigation, madam. I told you to call me June. You're making me feel like an old lady. And don't bother your handsome head about this. My husband will settle the score with Mark Bishop. What can you tell us about the passenger in your car? Jessica Hamilton. Poor Jessica. It's been a rough day for her. She's desperate to break into movies. What more can I say? I think you're lying, Mrs. McAfee. I think something happened to Jessica yesterday before the crash. I'm offended, Sunshine. Do you have any proof? Miss Hamilton's underwear were physically torn from her body. She wanted to go to a casting. I took her to a casting. Whatever happened after that is between her and Mark Bishop. We found a shrunken head. It was used to tamper with your car. You see, I normally don't drive off cliffs. The last thing I remember is getting behind the wheel. It's obviously some kind of movie prop. You must know where it came from. In case you hadn't noticed, I am the talent. And the talent doesn't deal with props or sets or any of that kind of stuff. Why don't you ask Mark Bishop which prop house he uses? You mentioned a Mark Bishop. You think he might have had something to do with this? He is a movie producer. As for his involvement, you just leave it to me and my husband to worry about. It's not going to play that way, Mrs. McAfee. We'll take it from there. <laughs> Relax, detective. You're not nearly as cute when you're mad. Mrs. McAfee, I think it would be in everyone's best interest if you accompanied Patrolman Gonzalez back to the receiving hospital. I'm going to be okay. These guys can take me home after my lawyer and I have talked to the news house. Mrs. McAfee, you are still under the influence of narcotics. And you're likely to go into shock once the drugs wear off. And I thought you were a heel. It's nice of you to be concerned. I think we're good here. Let's go see what we can shake out of the kid.
11 K Roger en route. Damn it, they learned from last last uh, last time. <laughs> Where I was just like driving off those things to get to the bottom of the street. Oh, I'm gonna have to go around. Uh, I didn't want to do this. People might move out of the way quicker if you use the siren. Detective Phelps, here to interview a Jessica Hamilton. Jessica Hamilton? Oh, yes. She's in the room, right behind you, Detective. You can't hold me here. No! I don't need to be manhandled by a doctor. I need my lawyer! Hey, where is the telephone? Do you know who I am? Hello, Doctor. I'm Detective Phelps. You're attending to the young lady from the auto accident? Yes. She's conscious now, but I doubt she'll remember much. She's still feeling some of the after effects. Jessica was drugged? She certainly was. Chloral hydrate would be my guess, and there's clear evidence of abuse. She's still a minor detective. Someone planned a double murder to cover up a statutory rape? Swaps seven years for life and gets Guy McAfee on their case? Doesn't make much sense to me. I guess it depends on what they had to lose. Feeling better since this morning, Jessica? A little. My head still feels swimmy. Hello, Jessica. Uh, my name is Cole Phelps. I'm a policeman. I'd like to talk to you about your accident, if that's okay. Um, okay. Can you tell me what you remember about the crash? It's all kind of fuzzy. I remember waking up here. Nothing happened yesterday. Tell the truth, Jessica. Why the big cover-up? I'm not lying to you. We found your underwear in your handbag, Jessica. You need to tell us what happened. The doctor told me what happened. I, I didn't want that. I just wanted to be a star, to be in movies. I told Junie what happened, and she told me to toughen up. That that was the price of stardom. Did she now, cold-hearted bitch? It's not Junie's fault. It's not my first time. I had a boyfriend back home, but my father found out about him. Even if you consented, Jessica, you're still underage. We need to get in touch with your parents, Jessica, to tell them what has happened. Oh, you don't need to worry them. They sent me along to stay with Aunt June. They trust her to take care of me. You're lying, Jessica. How are we going to make this right if you lie to us? Please, detective, why would I lie to you? Because you're a runaway, Jessica, and you don't have your parents' permission to be here. Now, do you want to tell me what really happened? I went with Junie to this strange place. It's difficult to remember. Someone gave me a drink to calm my nerves, and then I felt faint. I think I must have passed out. How did you meet Mr. Bishop? Well, Junie is a big movie star. You probably know that. She's doing a new movie.
What do you know about Bishop? He makes movies. I had to do a screen test. That's when you say some lines in front of the camera with the lights turned on you. That sucks. I accidentally hit the wrong button for that one. Oh, God. I meant to hit uh, doubt. That would have been a doubt, not a, not a truth. Um, all right. I know what happened to you, Jessica. Where exactly did it take place? Please. It's scary. It's really difficult to think of anything. Jessica, I really need you to help me here. I remember the mermaid. Was the mermaid in the movie too? No, it was on the front of a building. We pulled up in front of the mermaid. Thank you, Jessica. You've been a big help. Here's my card. If you think of anything or you need some help, just get in touch, okay? Okay. I think it might be a good idea if you went back home till you felt better, Jessica. I couldn't do that, officer. What if I got the part and I wasn't there? It's the tale of this town, Cole. Lambs that go willingly to slaughter. Who the hell is that? Must be her lawyer. He certainly expedited her release. I don't like it, Cole. Why is she in such a hurry? We should follow her. There she goes. Come on. Ballard is definitely up to something. She seems to have made a remarkably speedy recovery. Get in there and see what she's up to. Don't you? Then make some calls. I'm going to be very clear about this. You get this done, or I'm. Wilson's Hotel. Mr. Mark Bishop, that son of a bitch, lives in apartment 803. Sure, I got the film. So what's the story? 
I'm guessing she didn't stop for light refreshments. She made a call. Sounds like Mark Bishop has a heap of trouble headed his way. I've got an address. Wilson's Hotel, apartment 803. Oh shit, you better step on it. If he's got any sense, he'll be as far away from home as possible. If he had any sense, he wouldn't have tried bumping off Guy McCaffrey's wife in the first place. Or he'd have done the job properly. McCaffrey will break a fella's legs just for looking at his broad the long way. What did you make of the kid? You believe her story? I think she was doped out of her tiny mind and given the casting couch. That fucking bitch Ballard sold her out. So if Ballard was doing someone a favor, why did they try to kill her? Get to the apartment before someone gets hurt. I tried to stop them. It's, it's room 803, left out of the elevator. Sounds like we're about to make it a hat trick of hysterical female witnesses. Give it up, LAPD! I'm about to break your goddamn... All right, if you really want to dance, I curse you and your children. Oh, keep swinging. I like a nice breeze. Are you injured, Mrs. Bishop? I'm all right now. Those horrible, awful men. Perhaps you should sit down, ma'am. Yes, yes. Forgive me, officers. I'm very flushed. I'll just sit down for a moment. That's perfectly normal, ma'am. Take a moment while we look around. Yes, thank you. Well, just look at this mess. Presented to Mark. What do you have to do to earn twenty thousand dollars? Great Wall of Babylon, a replica of a replica. Looks like we found our mermaid. Who are these men in the picture? My husband, Mark, and Marlon Hopgood. They work together on occasion. That's Hopgood's shop.
looks like the old movie set downtown. Those men, I think they work for Guy McAfee. Do you know the name? No. Why should I? June Ballard is married to Guy McAfee. Have you heard of her? That slut. She's been badgering my husband for days. Mrs. McAfee alleges that your husband tried to kill her and her friend last night. I think you should tell us what you know. My husband's a movie producer. This has something to do with his new picture. He doesn't include me in his business. June Ballard said she had a deal to be in his new picture. Mark repeatedly told her no. He had Joan Leslie lined up for the role. That's how he got the finance. June made all kinds of threats. She was very rude to me. You know June Ballard? We were both on the same picture a few years back. That's how I met my husband. Where can we find your husband, ma'am? He told me he would be on set. That's all I know. You're lying, Gloria. He knows he has to get out of town, and you're covering for him. I'm tired of this, and you have nothing to go on. Sorry. My mistake. Either we find him, or McAfee's people do, Mrs. Bishop. If you care for him, you should make sure that we find him first. I do care for him. But I don't really know where he'd go if he were in trouble. Hopgood might know. Why is your husband paying Lorna Hopgood $20,000? Lorna? Marlon's ex-wife? Are you sure? You're lying, Mrs. Bishop. It's some kind of payoff. You know exactly what the money is for and who it's getting paid to. Do I? Would you like to prove that, detective? Your husband looks like he's being blackmailed. They obviously have something on him if he's prepared to kill to cover it up. Why is the payment going to Hopgood and not McAfee? Lorna works at a check cashing place in Hollywood. You need to ask Hopgood why he needs that much money in cash. Your husband was at a casting yesterday with a young girl? Not that I know of. He told me he was looking at locations. The picture's been cast. You know exactly what happened yesterday, don't you, Mrs. Bishop? You've been through it yourself. I'm going to call my lawyer. You have a damn cheek accusing me of that. If you don't ask, you never find out. Jessica remembered a mermaid. The mermaid on the front of the prop store. You better come clean with me. This is a sick town, Detective. Are you sure you really want to know? The truth is, my husband likes them young. And you think that's okay? I was 16 when I first met him. I thought he was a genius, a magician with film. I was 20 before I realized he was just a B-movie hack. But he's nothing compared to some of the monsters at these big studios. My guess is, Ballard sacrificed her little friend. Happens to a lot of girls. Your husband is in trouble. It could go easier for him if you were more helpful, Mrs. Bishop. He's a big boy, detective, and so are you. This is Hollywood. There's always a deal to be done.
an aging movie star, a wannabe star, a movie producer's wife. Uh, finally rubbing shoulders with the almost. Uh, are you gonna get your hat? You kind of stories they've given us. Clearly none of You kind of left it in the building movie. there. You just get to your hat. You, okay, that's not a. All right, that's not important. That's fine. Okay. I'm not buying you another hat. That's. You, you could you, you should go back and get it just, just you know just saying Phelps one two four seven. I need a location on a silver screen prop store. Just a moment. Silver screen props, corner third and Figueroa. Thanks, ma'am. Nice boy, putting all those... Mrs. Bishop knows more than she's letting on. She doesn't seem to realize how much trouble her husband is in. The LAPD are the least of their worries right now. Eh, you think she'd have gotten the hint after those hatchet men redecorated her apartment? Maybe she's just loyal. Or she's in on it. She didn't seem like your average giddy broad with nothing between the ears. Or she might just be trying to buy enough time for Bishop to put a couple of oceans between him and the cafe. Phelps and Bukowski, LAPD. We are investigating the attempted murder of June Ballard and Jessica Hamilton. Oh, Christ! I'm Marlon Hopgood. How can I help? You hold castings here? How'd you hear about that? I got a little soundstage out back. Lead the way. Keep him here, Stefan. I'm gonna take a look around. What's this got to do with me? Don't try my patience, knucklehead. Listen, I uh, have to call you back. I got some business here. Sit down, Courtney. This is Mickey. Mickey, this is Courtney Sheldon. What would you like to drink? Scotch. Straight up. I hear you're back at school learning to be a doctor, kid. Yes. That's right, Mr. Cohen. So you want to be a doctor and a dope peddler. Interesting combination, huh? 
Do we have a problem, Mr. Cohen? We might have, yeah. Selling your dope to my boy Lenny looked like a good move, but Lenny has been supplying uh, wholesale, so to speak. The Bindle boys in this town aren't used to the juice without a little of the middleman taking his cut. Lenny promised that wouldn't happen, Mr. Cohen. And Lenny works for you. What can I say about Lenny? Let me think. Oh, yeah, he's a putz. And he's lazy, and he's greedy, but he's my wife's brother. <laughs> now can you make a cake with those ingredients, huh? Please. <laughs> so how is that my problem, Mr. Cohen? Well, kid, the only way we're going to be able to make this work is to do some repackaging. We need to get the dope out of those dinky little cardboard boxes and... Surrettes. Yeah, surrettes. Great. We can put it into a big vat so we can water it down a little bit. I won't bore you with the chemistry, but it doesn't work that way. You're likely to kill even more people. Okay, listen. We want to buy you out, kid. I'll offer you 50 grand. Hey. Hey! You don't like my offer? The Sheldon kid? I think I want him dead. This is where you sprang from. Turn off the lights, Hopgood. Why would I want to do that? Humor him. One-way mirrors. There's a room on the other side. Huh. Well, well. Find a way into that peep den, Phelps. I'll stay here and keep our pervert company. Doping a 15-year-old kid and abusing her in a screen test. What is wrong with these people? Jungle Drums, 8th and Francisco. Attention, Mark Bishop. So what happened to the film of Hamilton's screen test?
You ever do any work for Mark Bishop? Mainly do work for the studios. RKO, Republic, Warner Brothers. So yeah, when Bishop is doing work for a studio, yes. When did you last see him? Now I'm doing work for his next picture. Still pre-production though. I haven't seen him around here in a while. I know you're lying, Hopgood. Bishop was here, and you know exactly what he was doing and what he left lying around afterwards. You come in here without a warrant, and now you start throwing your weight around? A 15-year-old girl told me how she was drugged and molested at a casting house. I found the chloral hydrate in your drinks cabinet. You give me something or I will break your fucking jaw, Hopgood. Bishop was here with June Ballard and the girl. A, a lot of producers and directors use this place. I I'm not responsible for what goes on here. McAfee's men are looking for Bishop. We need to find him first. Any idea where he might have gone to ground? If he really tried to kill McAfee's wife, my advice to him would be to leave town. I'm warning you, Do you Hopper, ever think you that being a total dick might not be the best way to do this? Have you guy. even tried to give the suspect a big you, kiss on the is. lips? I don't know if I would want to kiss some guy who molested like a 12-year-old kid. <laughs> just saying, you know, just, no, probably not. What's the deal with you and June Ballard? Look, buddy, I make props. I hardly ever meet the talent unless it's something tailor-made for them, like a sword or something. You and Ballard are blackmailing Bishop. That's why he cracked. You got nothing on me. My hands are clean on this. I'm about done with you and your accusations. That's all for now, Hopgood. We're taking you in. You would never oh. make it as a cop. Roy Earl, advice. It's not an Hold easy game, okay? <laughs> Clearly a vice case. You've been roughing up my informant? Hopgood is a vice informer? Yes, he is, Phelps, and a very important one. Look at that mug. Have you been upsetting these two officers, Marlon? So we just drop it? You do if you know what's good for you. You need to catch the movie producer before an angry husband does, from what I'm hearing. I'll be making a full report to the captain, detective. You do that, kid. We're all very impressed with you. Let it slide, Cole. Let's get out of here. Detectives! Johnny Goldberg, you work for Mickey C. That's right, detectives. You wouldn't happen to know the guys who roughed up Mrs. Bishop earlier today, by any chance. No, no, not us. We don't do that kind of thing. It's the husband we'd like to talk to. This is a police matter. You don't want to be taken in for obstruction of justice, do you boys? You could try the obstruction rap, but uh, it won't stick. We could beat that. You've had your 10 cents worth, gentlemen. Bishop knows how the world works. Mrs. McAfee hits him up for a movie part. Happens every day. But Bishop takes it a step too far and tries to rub out Mrs. McAfee. Naturally guy is going to get upset. What made you think Bishop would be here? We figure he might be planning a little accident for Hopgood, too. Those two guys have got some unfinished business. You let us know if you find Bishop. Guy McAfee can be a very generous man. I'm only going to warn you once, gentlemen, to stay out of this. This is a police matter. We will be bringing Mark Bishop into custody. <laughs> At least he's polite. Kind of dumb. But polite. But I'm a lot less polite, you smug son of a bitch. So let me put it in ruder terms that even a pair of blockheads like you might understand. 
The only reason that you don't have bars on your windows already is because you're small fry. And we don't waste our time on small fry. You stay away from Bishop, and you stay away from me. Is that clear enough for you, asshole? Now run along back to your boss so we can pat you on the head and tell you what good boys you are. I don't think they like your little pep talk. <laughs> Let's see him chase us now. Onto the movie set, Phelps. Let's roll. Oh, Christ. And they say working traffic is like watching paint dry. <sighs> you know how to piss people off, Bukowski. Hey, if they're prepared to gun down cops in broad daylight, McAfee really means business. Seems like we're the only ones who want Bishop alive. I have a good mind just to let him go work on the son of a bitch. I'm about done putting my life on the line to protect some child molester. That's our job, unfortunately. They don't get to dole out the justice. There's a slippery bastard now. No. God damn it! Mark Bishop, stop! LAPD! Get him, Phelps. I'll cover the exit. 11K calling KGPL, requesting assistance at 8 in Francisco. The abandoned movie set. My partner is pursuing suspect on foot. Code We're trying to help you, Bishop! This is all a big mistake! It's us or McAfee's boys, your choice. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Bishop, that's enough. Don't make this any harder on yourself, Bishop. It's June Ballard. She's blackmailing me. This Move chase music really dead. gets me pumping. Mark Bishop, you're under arrest for the attempted murder of. Jim yeah, the Ballard music in the game the is actually really good. Um, I can't remember Campbell. the composer's name, but he's a really good composer. Right, I'll come quietly. Just don't kill me. 
you found me, then McAvee's goons will too. Oh, we need we need to get out of here. All right, but you stay close. Any tricks, and I'll save McAfee's boys the trouble. Follow me. I know another way out of this place. Christ, so, detective, they're trying to kill me. So the actor playing Mark Bishop, I can't remember his name off the top of my head right this second, but he's in another game that I live streamed on my channel, an FMV game called American Hero. Uh, he was from that game. So, uh, just a little bit of a pop quiz there. Last chance to back the hell down! It's this way. McAfee doesn't make the rules. You hear me? Kill them for God's sake! I don't want to die! I thought you said you knew where you were going. Ah, we have to jump for it. Wait, what? <laughs> How come? Okay, hold on. <laughs> he jumped across that, didn't he? <laughs> What's Last going on to here? Back the hell down! Christ, detective, they're trying to kill me. It's this way. Let me try this again, because I swear, I swear to God, he jumped across that just fine. Kill them for God's sake! I don't want to die. There's no way out of here. I thought you said you knew where you were going. We have to jump for it. LAPD, you're making a big mistake. Okay, that was weird. So how come I didn't make it the first time? Come on, it's this way. Is this really the best McAfee's got? on the ground now there's a ladder leading to the ground this is insanity get him over here I'll cover you come on the cavalry's here for the love of God, how many are there? Stay down. How long do you think you can hold out?
Now this is what I call a result. Mark Bishop, erstwhile film producer, an all-around piece of shit, catches a fast ticket to Quentin for statue rape and attempted murder. So he gets to spend the next 15 years playing sissy instead of sticking it to little girls. That is justice with a capital J, Detective Phelps. You developed such a reputation, I'm not going to be able to hold on to you any longer. You're getting promoted. Go on, get your new assignment. It was good working with you, son. I love how your partner's like, oh, smiley face, shakes your hand, and then walks away from you like, fucking hell, I should have been promoted. Phelps, Bukowski, this your work? Can I help you, detective? Sorry, Cap, didn't see you there. Yeah, I'll bet you didn't. This is a traffic case. You need something? I'm here to buy a drink for the two LAPD traffic cops who broke the back of Guy McAfee's private army. You don't have a problem with that, do you, Captain? Go right ahead. Get in. I'm buying. You like jazz, Cole? The hopheads love it. Sure, I guess. Big bands and swing, I can understand, but this bebop palaver? How are you supposed to dance to that? This is Phelps, Leroy. Be nice to him. You'll like this place. They treat you right. You like a table, Roy? What do you think we want to do? Stand at the bar like I'll chumps? I'll get a table ready for you. Then. Don't look so happy to see me, Alphonse. I might get the wrong impression. Cole, this is Alphonse. He's a French Negro from Africa. Can you beat that? The Congo. A pleasure to meet you, Alphonse. Is Elsa singing tonight? Yes, yeah, she is. She has the next set. Come on, Cole. You can meet Elsa while they're fixing us a table. You'll like her. She's something else. Maybe another night, Roy. She's pretty beat up about it. Get your hands off me. Don't ever tell me what to do or what not to do, Alphonse. You got a nice club here. Don't spoil it. If you would follow me, detectives. Just through the door. He was my only real friend, Harlan. We went through it all. This game is super Very realistic. Gunfights in the middle no of town idea. and the cops you don't show up until everyone is dead. It feels access. like I'm really D. How can I be held responsible? Elsa, <laughs> are you going on? <laughs> no, for God's sake, yeah. he was my best friend. The only man who ever loved me without putting his hands on me. Hi, Elsa. Here's someone I'd like you to meet. Cole Phelps, war hero and crime fighter extraordinaire. And why would I want to meet another fascist from the LABD? Sorry about this, Cole. What an evening I'm having. First a Negro puts his hands on me, and then this. <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to, you German junkie whore? Don't you ever forget your place with me again. Do you hear me? Evening, Doc. How's business? Sanguine. Louis. So, so Adam J. Harrington, who's... Uh, doing uh, the role of Roy Earl, the cop that just hit um, Elsa. He's in a lot of video games. I'm honestly surprised I how many games... Guy. I'm honestly surprised how many games Adam J. Harrington has done. He's in, like, uh, the God of War game. He was in uh, Battlefield Hardline as, like, the, the informant. He's, he's done, like, so many video games. And um, it's so interesting because they always use his face in every game that I've seen him in. And so it's very obvious to tell when it's him just by his face and uh, obviously his speech because he always sounds the same. Help me here. I'm going to have to give her something before her performance. Blow it off, Cole. These artsy fartsy types always get a little flighty. Meet Dr. Harlan Fontaine, doctor to the stars. Mr. Fix It to the mental wreckage of Hollywood. <laughs> So what about that drink, boys?
So I could have gotten a five star rating there, but I screwed up on some of the questions, mainly the ones with uh, uh, Marlon Hopgood. Uh, I should have picked doubt. Instead, I picked lie, and then I used bad evidence um, when uh, talking to him. And then my other screw up was when I was talking to the little girl in the hospital. I accidentally hit the wrong button and a uh, bit late with that one. Um, anyway, I think that's the stream for today because we've done three cases today. Uh, we're now promoted to the Homicide Desk, which means tomorrow's playthrough we will start on Homicide, which is honestly the more interesting of all the cases because it deals with the real-life serial killer, the Black Dahlia. Um... Uh, again, as I stated, all of the cases in this game are based on real cases that the LAPD uh, worked on. Uh, the names of the characters have been changed, obviously. But uh, Team Bond, I did uh, speak about before the game came out back in 2011, did say that all of the cases in the game were based on actual cases, and they were get able to get those cases from the LAPD, because they were old, old case files that are archived. And so they, they managed to get those case files and use them to write the story for uh, Ellie Noir and all of the cases in general. So thank you very much to uh, Sir Spankums for joining today and everybody else who was watching today and everybody watching after the fact. It's always greatly appreciated. If you like what you see, please consider liking and subscribing. I cover PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, PC, and VR games. If any of that interests you, please consider liking and subscribing. Over on my YouTube channel, you'll find a playlist section of all of my previous live streams. Say, as an example, you missed the previous live stream of L.A. Noir. Simply go over to the playlist section, look up L.A. Noir, and you'll find all the previous streams of that game in there. You'll also find a joint collaboration section where I've worked with other YouTubers. Check those out. Uh, if you like those videos, consider liking and subscribing to those YouTubers as well. Anyway, that's it for me. I will be back uh, later on this evening. We're going to be uh, live streaming a third game tonight. We're going to be doing, starting Deadpool, the video game. Uh, just for a good laugh, because, uh, you know, Deadpool, the video game is freaking hilarious. And uh, I'm honestly surprised by the amount of people that didn't know that game existed. I hear it all the time. I hear, what, De there's a Deadpool video game? And I'm like, fuck yeah. Um, obviously it's not with, uh, Ryan Reynolds because it came out before the first movie. Uh, but it stars Nolan North, who we all know as Nathan Drake from the Uncharted series. Um, he plays Deadpool in it and, uh, it, just as he did in, in the cartoon series. He, he, he was Deadpool in all the cartoons as well. Um, so, uh, he reprises his role as Deadpool and he's just as funny as Ryan Reynolds, if not funnier. He's a bit more raunchy than Ryan Reynolds. Uh, anyway, so I will be back in a few hours with that, uh, with Deadpool the video game, and, uh, I'll be back tomorrow with more of L.A. Noir, and, um, we finished off Ghostbusters, so we won't be, uh, doing any more of Ghostbusters, that, that live stream is done. Uh, so I might do, start another new game. Uh, as I was saying, Sir Spankums earlier, I managed to get right up to the spot that uh, in, in uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake that we were last at before uh, the checkpoint issue. So I will be also continuing Final Fantasy VII Remake this week uh, and finishing off that game as well. Anyway, thank you once again, everybody, and uh, stay tuned for more from the Gamer's Grotto. Have a wonderful afternoon, and I will see you in a few hours with Deadpool, the video game. Take care.